In teaching casual and or impolite language through multimedia, the case of non-honorific Panama speech styles in Korean, Lucian Brown of the University of Oregon puts forward solutions to what he considers the marginalization of casual and impolite conversational registers in traditional second language pedagogy. Although the study is specific to Korean, Brown asserts that the general principles can be applied to other languages as well. Brown begins with a personal anecdote from Korea in which, frustrated with what he felt to be the incompetence of a Korean traffic personnel, he wanted to express himself in a way that would convey his impatience and anger. To his disappointment, Brown came to realize that he simply never learned how to express himself in Korean using impolite or even casual language. Brown cites Dewell in 2010 in describing the presentation of language in textbooks as emotionless, and that when emotions are represented, they tend to be polite and emasculated, and that loaded expressions, especially if they are vulgar or slang, are banned from the classroom because of their offensive character. Citing Airway, 1982, the observation is made that textbooks also avoid expressions that suggest religion, even when these are so commonly used in the target language, that they have virtually lost their religious meanings, such as the expression Santo Dios in Spanish, as well as topics seen as potentially controversial or taboo, including alcohol consumption, sex, and radical politics. And Cook in 2008 notes that L2 users are typically shown as tourists and visitors who ignorantly ask the way, desperately buy things, or try to fathom strange travel systems. The overarching theme is that textbooks have the marked tendency to avoid presenting constructions and themes that are casual or impolite in nature. Brown affirms that this leaves students at a disadvantage, particularly for L2 learners of Korean, where the degree of politeness or impoliteness is expressed grammatically via honorific particles and forms. The author asserts that the predominating registers being taught in Korean language classrooms are typically high in terms of politeness, or kontaimal, to use the Korean term for honorific registers, at the expense of non-honorific registers, or panmal. This is a problem, according to Brown, since Korean L2 learners are very likely to encounter non-honorific speech in authentic day-to-day -day context. Consequently, having textbooks play it safe deprives students of valuable material. Brown builds on the consciousness-building techniques offered in Beyond 2007 to offer a potential solution to the lack of exposure to casual speech in the Korean language classroom, specifically using multimedia resources to design, implement, and evaluate activities that show students authentic uses of non-honorific speech. In this study, Brown constructs activities around a clip from the Korean TV drama Palyu Yenin, Lovers in Paris, in order to teach non-honorific panma constructions at the intermediate level. Through this, Brown attempts to explore two areas of potential research identified and beyond in 2007. One, the investigation of the implementation and effectiveness of the techniques of consciousness raising, and two, application of these techniques to teach different speech styles, including plain and intimate. What Brown hopes to achieve is the presentation of an effective pedagogical methodology involving the use of multimedia. A small digression on Korean language structure. There are six speech styles, each one marked by specific sentence final verb endings that mark the social position of the speaker relative to his or her interlocutor. Most split these into two groups, one being the honorific kontaimal, literally respect speech, register, the other being the non-honorific panmal, literally half speech register. While this is not too unlike second person pronoun distinctions in languages such as Spanish or French, it should be noted that Korean speech style can be fairly complex and most often involves the mixing of styles depending on situation and context. Suffice it to say that speech styles within the Kontaimal register are typically viewed as being more formal, distant, and authoritative, while those within the Panmal registers are typically viewed as more personal, intimate, or even condescending, such as when a superior uses it towards a subordinate. Brown states that Panmal speech styles are comparatively underemphasized in the Korean language classroom. Brown in 2010 conducted an analysis of three Korean second language textbook series, all of which were published in South Korea, and found that only 12.4% of textbook dialogue sentences used the Panmal Register. Additionally, in all three series, the introduction of the Panmal Register was delayed until the intermediate level, after which the majority of dialogues meant to be between friends continued to be portrayed in the honorific Kantamal Register.
the author dismisses the claim that maintaining the majority of textbook dialogues in the content law register is an attempt to simplify or make easier the learning of Korean. Brown points out that sticking to the honorific register does not impede the presentation of complex vocabulary items or sentence structures. Moreover, even at the advanced level, the frequency of the Ponwell register is minimal, with two of the textbook series analyzed actually decreasing its use. Brown rejects what he considers to be the tendency for formal instruction to shelter students from more casual speech styles in order to prevent their potential misuse, saying that while there are certainly dangers to the misuse of casual style, casual style also carries important sociocultural qualities tied with intimacy and closeness. The lack of these values may leave students sounding awkward or distant in conversations with those they are close to. In effect, sheltering learners from non honorific forms ignores the reality that language teachers cannot control all the exposure that learners have to the language. Since non honorific forms tend to be delayed until the intermediate level, what ends up happening is that Korean language students first encounter these forms outside of the classroom, such as by watching Korean programs on the internet or through online chatting, as pointed out by E. Kim, 2011. Brown points out that there exists only one other study specifically looking at the incorporation of multimedia in the teaching of speech styles in the Korean language classroom. Bion, in 2007, describes the design and implementation of a multimedia-centered activity teaching the differences between two speech styles within the Contemal Honorific Register. Using clips from a talk show and shopping channel show, the paper describes how the use of speech styles in these clips can be taught through both deductive and inductive methods. Beyond 2007 puts forward consciousness-raising tasks that involve the learners analyzing L2 data in order to arrive at an explicit understanding of targeted linguistic properties. Brown further cites Taguchi, 2011, who points out the use of technology as well suited to the teaching of pragmatics, that is, discourse-based linguistic phenomena since it embodies several factors recognized as key conditions for pragmatic learning, such as input, interaction, simulation, and multimodality. In short, multimedia is arguably an excellent tool to teach students more nuanced aspects to target language conversation and discourse. The current study reports on the design, implementation, and evaluation of a multimedia-centered activity to teach the non-honorific plain ending ta and non-honorific intimate ending e to an intermediate level class. The goals of the project were to demonstrate techniques that can be used to raise awareness of pragmatic features when teaching casual and or impolite language through multimedia, and to evaluate the viability of these techniques in an authentic classroom context. The activity was implemented during, the, during a 100 minute session of an inter intermediate Korean class at an undisclosed European university reputed to have a renowned and long-standing Korean studies program. The class is composed of 10 students, making three groups. Six undergraduate students, all in their early 20s, one undergraduate mature student who was married to a South Korean national, and three postgraduate students, one of whom was the only heritage learner in the class. The textbook for the class was Continuing Korean, and the activity was used to supplement the introduction of non-honorific speech style in Lesson 26 of the book. The textbook is written for the most part in the style of grammar translation. However, instruction was done predominantly in the communicative style. In the previous class, the students had been provided with an introduction to the use of non-honorific speech styles, including an explanation of the pragmatic differences between plain ta and intimate e. The data collected consisted of the reactions students had regarding the teaching techniques. Two measures were applied. The instructor kept a journal in which he recorded any noteworthy student reactions, any problems encountered, and a general report of class progress. Secondly, the instructor carried semi-structured interviews with three of the learners, each randomly selected from each of the three groups, to discuss their experiences using the activity. The two-minute and 36-second clip chosen for the activity came from episode 16 of the 2004 drama Paliu Yenin, Lovers in Paris. Much of the tension arises from the difference in social status between the protagonist, Tai Young, and her well-bred fiancé, Hiju. In the clip shown, Tai Young is formally introduced to her fiancé's family, much to their chagrin. Interactions between Tai Young and her future in-laws are cold and unwelcoming, this being readily apparent from the family's refusal to speak to Tai Young in the Panmal Register, which the latter openly requests of them. Four activities revolved around this clip. The first activity, which lasted around 12 minutes, 
had learners work out the relationships between the characters. Prior to showing the clip, the instructor showed still images of the characters with their names and asked students to speculate as to their ages and the relationships between them, which would be crucial to the speech style each utilized. Learners were asked to complete a diagram that had been displayed on a PowerPoint slide, linking the characters while watching the clip for the first time. Answers were discussed as well as the social context of the scene. The second activity lasted around 18 minutes, and learners were asked to work out whether the characters used honorific kontaimal or non-honorific panmal to each other. They were presented with another PowerPoint slide with practically the same image, this time asked to indicate whether each character used the kontaimal or panmal register. The clip was not shown until the end of the activity, making the learners rely on their previous knowledge of Korean honorifics or what they had seen in the clip for the first activity. After the clip was shown for the second time, at the end of the activity, the instructor led a discussion of why the usages of the honorifics develops. In the third activity, learners were asked to work in groups. Presented with 12 images of pivotal scenes, the groups were asked to put the images in the correct chronological order. Additionally, the group was given 12 lines of dialogue to match to the images. In the fourth activity, the learners were provided with a complete script of the scene, but some of the non-honorific verb endings were presented in both possible forms, as the plain ta and intimate a. In pairs, the learners were asked to choose which ending they thought was more appropriate or which they expected the characters to use based on what they had learned about the functions of the two speech styles. After these four activities, the students were split into two groups and were asked to rehearse and perform the scene. For homework, the students were given the task of writing the next scene from the drama, making sure that the characters continued to use the same pattern of speech styles. Brown asserts that students were highly engaged in the activities, vigorously participating and providing plenty of feedback. Among the various reactions of note were strong reactions to the non-reciprocal use of the honorific register between female Taeyang and male Kiju, reflecting very traditional patriarchal gender norms, as well as the seemingly forced submission of Taeyang to her disdainful in-laws. In this way, Korean L2 learners are given a more or less authentic portrayal of Korean cultural mores. Brown claims that his study demonstrates the use of multimedia as a viable means through which to raise learners' awareness of pragmatic features of the Korean non-honorific panmal register. This has two implications, the demonstration of the importance of explicit teaching forms that are considered casual or even impolite in addition to those polite forms already part of the traditional second language curricula, and the presentation evaluation of a specific pedagogy for teaching the pragmatics of Korean non-honorific speech. The author maintains that these principles may be applied to other languages as well, and suggests the use of multimedia-centered activities for such phenomena as the vu-tu ou tu distinction in French and Spanish, or men's versus women's speech in Japanese. Brown concludes by saying that the techniques presented bring explicit salience to conversational context that eases the understanding of the culture-specific pragmatic features at play. Giving learners discrete choices in speech styles provides them with an active role in mapping form usage relationships, thus represents, to an extent, real-world pragmatic decision-making. In teaching casual and or impolite language through multimedia, the case of non-honorific panmal speech styles in Korean, Lucian Brown of the University of Oregon puts forward solutions to what he considers 